Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton were separated by just 0.3 of a second during qualifying for the Bahrain 2021 Grand Prix. But why was Lewis slower? Well, great news because Formula One released this article which has data in it. And the data is this exactly the kind of data that you can get from your own logger at a club and amateur level. And I thought it'd be really fascinating if we went through that so that you can see the process for approaching data analysis and then what you are aiming for and what you can get out of this kind of stuff come the other end. So let's get into it. So what I'm going to do is present a four-step data teardown uh, for whatever better description, basically just comparing Max against Lewis, but this could be just as just the same as you comparing two of your own laps together or you and a friend when you put them all together. And what I want to do is just take you through the methodology from going from, okay, we've come in to the pits and we now we're sitting there and we're about, we're about to do some data. We've got some time before our next session. What are we going to do between now and then so that by the time we go next time out on the track, we'll have a better plan for going quicker. Now, I do appreciate it's qualifying. So what we're, so they only get this one chance, but this is the kind of stuff they would have been doing ahead of qualifying to put this plan together. And it's the kind of stuff that you can do every single time to start to look for those improvements and those nuances. So the four steps are familiarize yourself with the track, look at your onboard video, then start to dig into the data, and that's at two levels, so both uh, kind of a macro level overall, and then narrowing down onto some of the finer details. And then the crucial bit that's often missed is to put that together in a plan. And you want that plan to be super simple and something actionable, so that basically the next time you go on a track, you will go faster, or at least know how to go faster. And I think that's a really important, subtle, significant piece that often gets missed, is the fact that what we're trying to do here is twofold. We're trying to work out the puzzle of how to put a fast lap together. And then we have the fun and enjoyment of actually trying to enact that. But at least with this route, with this data, we're trying to reduce the uncertainty around what you need to do so that when you actually go and do it, that is as fast as you can go, okay? So starting off, let's have a look at track map. This is Bahrain, where we're at. It's a track map I grabbed off the internet. It's probably got a little bit more detail than normal, but the big thing you want to be aware of is the numbering, in this case, of the corners. So some tracks have got names, and this this track has numbers. We talk about turn one, talk about turn four, turn 10 particularly, turn 13 exactly. So you just want to be really familiar with all the turns of the track. It sounds obvious, but you want to do that ahead of time so that when you start to dig into the detail and dive in, you don't get confused and you're not thinking, oh, where is that, okay? So have this to hand, grab a track map. Oh, this particular one's got some ideas of speed and gears and things like that. But basically, you just need the, the layout and the corner names. So next thing is the video. And so if you run some onboard video, dive in and grab this. I've done a, a little video showing you how you can create your own side-by-side -side videos if, if your data analysis soft, software doesn't do that for you. So I'll put a link uh, below for that. But this is the uh, Formula One one that they have released. Uh, it's a great video. Go and have a look at it on that YouTube link. It should work for you, I hope. I've restrained myself from going through it live on this video because I was worried about you know copyright and such. So what I'm going to do instead is take you through the key elements of this video that I would have shared with you had I been going through it live. And just to give you an idea of like, how do you approach watching a side-by-side -side kind of video like this? Where do you start with that? So here we are coming into uh, the first sequence of corners, turns one, two, and three. And we're starting in the bottom right, and you can see we've got Max on the right, uh, Max on the left, Lewis on the right. And what you're looking for all the time with these video comparisons is just references to other parts of the track. And you'll have seen this, I'm sure, if you've ever watched some of the stuff on the TV. They're always saying, oh, look at the marker board lying on the floor. In this case, we've got a brake marker board on the, uh, on the left here. So if I can highlight that so you can sit here. So you can see at just over six seconds into the lap, Lewis is ever so slightly ahead, okay? He's ever so slightly ahead coming into the corner. That's basically what we can grab from that. And they position the cars in approximately the same position. Coming into turn one, you can see that uh, they're both turning the wheel. It looks like 
Max has got a little bit more steering lock-ons, but that could be just the, the ratio. If you look at the wheel angles, they're pretty much the same. But again, here I picked this point because you this is from the driver's eye view and you're looking instantly, I hope your eyes are drawn to the apex, you're just looking to the apex and you're looking, like, how can I craft that? But basically, they're the same, I would say, at this point. So there's not really some any major differences going on there. And which is quite important because this is, this is quite a key corner because from this corner onwards all the way up it's, it's pretty much acceleration zone we do have corners two and three but you're not lifting again for those so it's really important one to to hook this one up and they both did it really well the final screenshot here is the coming you know through turn three they're both using quite a lot of curb max probably on the limit there but again they're just trying to pick the point of least resistance to get themselves through neither of them have got a massive amount of steering lock going on and they're just exiting if you look at the marker board on the right, you can see that they're pretty much the same. Maybe Max has actually uh, got a, you know, gained a slight bit you know, on this corner, but there's not really a lot of difference going in, okay? So coming down that straight, we starting in the bottom left this time, we're gonna go, keep on going around clockwise. Both cars are coming into turn four. Turn four ended up being a, a deciding corner for the actual race itself but here we're just in qualifying remember so we're just coming into turn four again you've got the the marker board on the left and as near as damn it there's no difference between the two of them you can just tell that straight away from the video coming towards the end of the braking zone you can see that there's a slight difference i don't know if it's, this is super subtle stuff and actually this is one of the reasons that we don't use video on its own for doing this kind of analysis because some of the differences can be too subtle to see but they're very significant on the lap time and very significant in the car and with your brain but here you can see it and it's all here but it's just a lot harder quite often just to do it only on video which is why the data will be useful but you can see now in this second one that Lewis has actually gained a little bit on this initial piece of braking over Max Okay, so we don't know why that is. Your initial assumption might be because he's braked later, but it could be braking is less hard. Or it could be, it's lots of different reasons why that might be the case. And that's the other thing just to be aware of. It's like, we'd, let's not get into the analysis of why until we understand the what. Okay, so we're just trying to hold ourselves back from making any predictions on what was the cause. We just want to understand what is actually happening. So Lewis is now slightly ahead and he's about a bit of curbing ahead. And that's quite a lot considering we're, we're only half a second difference in those two screenshots. So Lewis is definitely doing something differently. Rolling round to the third image, you're turning in and you can see they've both got the same amount of lock on, but Lewis has managed to get to the apex ever so slightly earlier. Now, one of the things that you might find with your own data is that the differences will be much bigger than this. What's quite nice about this is that we're really getting into the fine details. But what's fascinating when you look at uh, more amateur level data is that these differences can be quite quite big, much bigger and, and easier to see. But here you can see, okay, Max is ever so slightly slower to the apex than Lewis. And then coming around for the fourth picture, you can just see on the exit, they've both taken basically as much curb on the exit of turn four as they felt they could get away with. I think there were some track limits and things like that for this particular corner in qualifying. But interestingly, Lewis is still ahead, but maybe not quite as much ahead as he was about a couple of seconds earlier. So at this point, Lewis is ahead, but not by much. So starting in the top left, going around quad pliers again. So here we're coming into this sort of S's complex, and I've, I've chopped the lap up into these sort of segments of related cornering and basically they are the way you do this in segmenting your lap is normally before any major hard braking zones the next hard braking zone that we have here is turn eight so i've done five six seven into eight as one long piece okay so it's not something else just to think about in your mind is like what don't just look at you know, like turn seven and oh, I think that's it. But whatever's happening at turn seven started at turn five kind of thing because it's all related together. I'm sure you know all this anyway, but just to recap and just keep your mind fresh on, on what is really going on because it's so easy to dive into the detail and, and get confused. So here we go, turn into turn five. 
And Max is taking a little bit more curb. And this is a theme for this whole slide, is that Max is taking a little bit more curb all the way through this complex. So you can see he's, he's a bit further on the left over here. Then we're turning into turn six and he's a bit further on the right. And then we're coming in to turn seven and he's taken a little bit more on turn seven as well. I haven't done a video, a picture for that one, but you'll see it if you watch in the video. And then this, this third one is the exit of turn seven. And you can actually see that Lewis is out on the curb there and Max has held back a little bit. Then we've got into the braking zone for turn eight. So maybe he's just trying to get himself all lined up. But basically we get to this point here. So where was it? Like Lewis was ahead before. Now, what can we say? I think yeah, Lewis is still marginally ahead at this point, coming into turn eight. So they're turning in and you can see a nice onboard shot and it's super clear and basically, yeah, at this point, by the time they get to the turning point, maybe it looks that Max has ever so slightly gained on Lewis on that running to the apex. So that's quite interesting. So on this bit, the braking piece, that sort of trail braking into the corner, Max for this corner has actually gained. And one of the things you might see if you watch the video in, in detail, you can actually, you can't see Max's dashboard very well, but you can see Lewis's and you can see him changing the brake bias. And he's in between, he's like 55% and 58% and nibbles at 59% at one point and has changed his mind, goes back to 58%. And then by the time we get down here, he's, he's gone from 55 to had another go at 58% for turn eight. Again, something that I club amateur level racer doesn't do because it's going to feel different every time you do that but you can start to see this is the level that these guys are at in the sense that they're, they're just trying to maximize every little opportunity they, they can do and Lewis has been doing that playing with a bit of brake bias I unfortunately can't see whether Max has done the same thing but I imagine he, he would have had a, had a go at that too so at this point Max is it looks he looks really good he's coming in there he's, he's ever so slightly ahead of Lewis but they are basically the same at this point Okay, so starting at the uh, top, this is where things really do start to, to separate. And bearing in mind, again, it is only three tenths over the whole lap, but this is where it happens, basically. So we've got, Max has managed to drag himself up the hill from the exit of turn eight. And so he's already ahead, as you can see, that white line on the floor. So you can already see Max is ahead of Lewis coming into turn nine. And this is one of the only major differences that these guys take. Max here uses a much wider entry. Both of them basically ignore the apex of turn nine and, and they're running really wide. And what they're trying to do is just really open up the, the entry to turn 10. So that, because turn 10 after then it's a flat out and it's really important to uh, get a good exit from turn 10. And so they're, they're both of them running out, but Max is, he's really must feel quite confident to be out that far to the right. And you can see, so in the second image, he's got half a car length over to the right compared to Lewis. And you can see like on the black stripes on the ground that, you know, to give you some references again. And then going to picture number three, he stays out there. So he's still like right out there. And in his mind, and I think Lewis is probably thinking the same. He's, I just want to open this up. But Lewis has got, he's taking more of a sort of sharper like V in. Whereas, whereas Max is trying to roll around the outside a bit more. And it's, as a driver, this is a very conscious thing that they will have been doing in their mind of I want to drive in and then turn or I want to roll around as far out as I can. And it will be a real conscious effort on both their parts to, uh, to be doing what they're doing here. And it, it is quite distinctly different. And it really does benefit Max in a second. So here we go to the fourth picture. So they both turn in and it's, it's quite hard to see, but Max has got the car ever so slightly rotated a bit more because of his wider entry than Lewis. He is ever still slightly ahead, as you can see, but there's still nothing in it. And then I've done this little zoomed in bit below. So you've got the, the picture, which is a zoomed in one of that fourth one for Lewis. And then about two tenths later, he had a snap of oversteer. And I guess this is all to do with the entry. So this is all, as a result, he's coming in through this turn nine, but this it, the snap oversteer, which he controls beautifully. And I have to say Lewis is one of the best at controlling this snap oversteer in a very smooth and fluid way. But that snap oversteer, he still gets to the apex, but he's just rotated a little bit more. And the consequence of that is the pole, really, for Lewis. So if you look at the bottom right-hand corner, um, you've got Max again and then Lewis. And I've done it, this is just coming on to the, the exit of turn 10, but Max has gained 
possibly a car length and a half as a result of that Lewis having to do that little wiggle. Why that's interesting from a sporting point of view is it means that they both have to be absolutely uh, perfect against each other. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that plays out. But from a cover amateur level, these kind of minor things, it just highlights again that need for smoothness, that kind of, you take it to the limit, but you don't want to go over it. So it's that's the kind of game that we're playing. And here we can see like Lewis is, he's lost a couple of tenths we'll see in a minute he's lost a couple of tenths there car length and a half and basically so max is already off down the straight and lewis is playing catch up now so here we are so that this one starts in the sort of bottom left and, and goes around clockwise again to the actual final thing here we can just see that max basically maintains that gap all the way around and there's interestingly there's not a lot of major differences for the rest of the lap which is why i've done all these other corners all together but you can see if you just do your checks, so where am I relative to something that means something, which is a bridge, or in this case, the, the top bar bit. Apex, that little, I don't know, stripey cone thing, whatever it is, marker. You can see, like, Max can see it. Lewis can't on the second picture. He's just got that, that two tenths all the time. Coming down the back straight, the, you know, Max is still ahead of Lewis. He's much closer to the sign. Coming to the final corner, turn 14, you can see that again max is just there a little bit earlier than lewis and then they cross the line and it's uh what is it three tenths four tenths difference but really all of that's happened in that turn 10. well that was a lot wasn't it so taking a step back we've done our video analysis but we don't want to what happens so often i see this is that people get into this detail analysis by corner with the driver and they just you just end up and we have these long conversations like i've just explained to you for each corner and sake of this and but what the mistake that i feel people make is that they go they don't just focus on what happened they try and do the the why and i've already started to talk about the the oversteer moment and stuff like that that's the kind of stuff that we just need to plant but not labor and then just focus on what actually happened lewis has lost some time in in, in sector two and it's around that sort of turn nine turn ten reason and for what we know so far that's what it was but we don't know what we're going to do about it now let's start to have a look at the data now this is the kind of stuff that normally if you run a data logger you might be used to seeing this stuff if you don't or you're thinking about running a data logger this is the kind of stuff that you get it's really rare or it has been that we get this kind of information from professional teams and certainly not overlaid of competitive data i think it's absolutely fantastic that Formula One have, have done this. And so we can now see what's going on. So where do you start with, with this lot if you've, not, if you've not done it before? There's two things to, to, to do. First, to orientate yourself. What is it that we have? And then dive into some details. And the real rule of thumb on this is once you get an idea of what all the squiggly lines represent, it is just a big game of spot the difference. You're like a detective now. And you're just trying to work out what is different and what looks weird. So if there are differences, and Lewis is in, I think it's a red, and then Max is in the blue, you can see if there are differences between the two lines. If there's no differences, they'll be on exactly on top of each other. If there's a difference, they won't be. So these are the kind of things that you're you'll be looking for. Okay. So to orientate yourself first. With this particular data piece of information, they've given us the corner number. If you go remember all the way back to the track map. We wanted to know all the different numbers of the corners. So luckily with Bahrain, the corners have numbers and numbers are, are here. So you can look along the top and say, right, okay, whatever's happening at turn one, two, three, do a vertical line. Whatever this stuff is, if you don't get it, well, it doesn't matter, but whatever's below that one, two, three, that is happening at turn one, two, and three. And the same like turn four, whatever's like in that vertical line below. So as we go along horizontally along the chart, this is us driving around the lap. Okay, so on the far left is the start finish line, and on the far this is the start finish line. In the middle is what we did around the lap. So, what else have we got on here? So, we've got the corners and then the data, but what is the data that we've got? So, I've made them a bit bigger in case you can't see it. So, you've got the gears, what, so what gear you're in, steering. Now, quite often with a club level setup you may not have steering because it requires additional sensors and things like that so if you just have your gps uh, system you can use a lateral acceleration 
it would be absolutely fascinating to get the longitudinal and lateral acceleration data to go with this. Uh, Formula One haven't given us that here, but it would I, I think that would be quite fascinating as well. But in this case, they have a steering trace, so you can see this is exactly what the wheel up is right and down is left. Speed is the next one, so higher up the faster you are, and then the, the lower down, the slower you are going. Then you've got the pedals, so brake and the throttle. They haven't got two, two pedals on a Formula One car. And what they've done here is they've overlaid them together, so you can, you've can you got throttle and then brake, so they've full throttle, full brake. Yeah, they've actually put two, switched two together and that's nice because they're related. And then the one at the bottom, they call it Delta Time, Delta T, it's called Lap Variance, it's called S Time, it's called... This particular channel is basically the speed channel of one lap minus the other one in terms of t lap time. And the idea is you can see precisely how much lap time you were gaining or losing as you went around the lap. It's one of the most important channels and everyone has their own name for it. And I have no clue why that is, but just be aware. But this is the channel you want. This is the one that is going to really allow you to rapidly compare two laps. And I've got you know some articles on that. Again, I'll put some links below if you want to dive into how it's actually calculated, typically, and exactly, you know, how it what it looks. So I've got some videos and other things of just on this channel. It's so important. But in this particular case, we've got the, the horizontal line there. When the uh, the blue line is above the line, Lewis is faster, and when the uh, blue line is below uh, the zero, Max is faster. So I've drawn that for you. Uh, the reason it's just one line is because you have one lap relative to the other. So in this case, they've done they've actually done Lewis relative to Max. So if you have got Lewis's lap as the baseline, where is Max faster and slower than Lewis? Okay. And if they did it the other way around, the line, of, the wiggly line would be red and that would be Lewis and then it would be blue. And that's quite important just to clarify that when you're doing this yourself, just to make sure which is your reference and which is the, the baseline. Because at the end of the day, you can, oh, I'm getting quicker and you might, might have got it wrong. But you can double check that by looking at the far right and say, this lap, Lewis's lap was three tenths slower. So uh, that must mean Max was three tenths, quick, three or four tenths quicker. Yeah, so you can see on the right here, that the blue line is way below and, and so it's, so it's 0 0.05 and then point here you can see the scale yeah you can see the scale so by the time we get to here that's exactly at 0 0.3 whatever it is 39 or 38 or whatever yeah but you can see that that's why it's max is quicker so so if you know that endpoint and they started off they crossed the line both zero and they got to the end and max was 0 0.3 or 4 seconds quicker which is that bit all this wiggly stuff in the middle is ex describing exactly the difference between the two cars all the way through the lap. So rather than just the sector times, which just show you at like two or three points, this is showing you pretty much every few milliseconds effectively where one driver was faster than the other. And again, if you want to know how it's calculated, I'll put a link to one of the articles I've, I've written about it. Starting at the bottom and then working our way up, what jumps out of you when you look at that? It's, we're doing the spot the difference. This is the kind of stuff that I, I, I think can be really, it can be missed because it's so obvious, but it's not obvious unless someone points it out to you. What we're looking for is the differences. So, so this point, that's that's the 0 0.34, the, you know, 0 0.4, 0 0.3 difference. And they started off at zero. So something's going on in this area here, in the middle bit, that is different because it's more wiggly. Furthermore, you can see initially, so we're going down the straight, we're going to turn one. Yeah, turn one, two, and three. If you look at the top there, yeah, one, two, three. Going along the straight, and it's all set pretty similar. So if you remember back to the video, that's what we said, isn't it? It's all pretty similar, and then coming into turn four, and it was pretty much the same. And then something happened on the entry to turn four, do you remember? Like the Max and Lewis were exactly the same, and then we got to the apex of turn four, and we said Lewis was slightly ahead. And look, the line's gone up, and Lewis is slightly ahead. Hang with, if this is new for you, like this, Hopefully it's blowing your mind. If it's not new for you, you'll be like, Samir, get on with it. This is this is boring stuff. But if it's new for you, this is this is really powerful. It's not only showing it's showing you precisely how much he was up. So Lewis is actually up 1.2 tenths, which in Formula One terms is quite a lot. In in our terms, in club amateur level, it's that's nothing. We can you know, we lose that all the time. We, we our scale might be more seconds here, but the point is that the chart's gone up, and that is the point of difference okay that is the point of difference. so lewis is 
is he's faster into the apex. And then something's happened because the charts come back down again. And so in actual fact, um, he's lost some of that advantage because so Max has been maybe a little bit more cautious on where he's prioritised his exit. And we were just talking about the finest demises here, but what's interesting is Max then carries that. If you see the slope of this line, carries it all the way through the next few corners. And that's this little wiggly five, six, seven into eight. Yeah. And so he's carried it all the way through there. See so five, six, seven, eight. And then we said, but we get to eight and it's about the same. Remember from the video, it's about the same. And the reason why we're referring back to the video is just so you just want a sanity check every time. You just want to like, just make sure that you've got it, you're not interpreting something crazy. So there we go there. And then we remember we said from that point on, from the exit of turn eight, Max seemed to have a bit of an advantage over the next piece of track. And he did. So he got, he was quicker up the hill. And so quicker up the hill was to about here. So he's gained a tenth on Lewis. And if you remember that the, there was that line in the video along the road. And so he was up to it quicker than Lewis. So that's what a tenth looks like. And then coming into nine and then 10. So he's, even though he's taken that wider line, he's carried ever so slightly more speed in. And we do have a speed trace here, but you can't really see it. And that's what this, why this chart is so powerful. He's carried ever so slightly more speed in or whatever. And, and he's basically been quicker. And then Lewis has had that oversteer moment and he's, he's, he's lost that you know, tenth and a half, whatever. And then for the rest of the straight, they're the same. The other trace to look at is the speed trace. Now, if you look at the beginning of that, there's not a lot going on. This is, these are, if you're wondering what good looks like on a speed trace, these things, these are amazing, right? They're, they're really sharp and with a nice curve coming down to the apex and then bang straight up. If you're looking for, if you look at your traces as a club amateur level and they don't look like that, this then gives you you know, what good it looks like. They're absolutely amazing. And so, well, you'd expect they would be, but until you see it, it's great to, to be able to see this. And then look here, there's ever so slight difference there. Lewis is, what Lewis has done there is he's just, he's just let the brakes run a little bit more into the apex. Now what's happened is he's lost a bit on the exit, but if he could have hung on to that, that might have been quite, that might have been quite, quite a good way to do that corner. The other thing, if you look at the gearing here, before I'd go on to that, they're pretty much in the same gear for each corner. And one of the things here, you can see that, whilst I get too, too confused too quickly, but basically if you look, they're basically breaking at the same time. They're coming off the throttle and breaking at the same time. But then what's happening is Lewis is waiting for some reason, and then changing gear later and quicker than Max. And this is like a consistent theme all the way along. So Lewis is consistently changing gear later and faster on the way down than Max. And it's, that's really, really fascinating. Now, there are some points where they do choose different gears. So we'll have a look at that. But pretty much we're, we're zooming along here. So we've got this, and there's some differences here on the speed. So back to our speed trace. Differences here on the speed through turn five, six, seven. And I think that is, you know, we, we, we saw in the video that Max was taking a different line. So maybe that explains it. But he's, there's not really much, a massive amount of time in it. And then coming here now, this is quite interesting coming into uh, turn nine. Now Lewis seems to be, he just doesn't get quite as much speed coming in as, as Max coming into. And so that cost him anything. But then this is the different line or whatever we've got coming in. So they're both onto the brakes about the same. Maybe Lewis is a little bit, a little bit nice. You can't really see this way. It gets a, bit, a little bit difficult. But what is different is that Max takes turn 10 in second gear and Lewis is taking it in third. But regardless, by this point, see this spike here, so this is a steering, and this spike here, this is where Lewis is having his oversteer moment. This is where it all goes wrong. And we've got a zoomed in one for this in a minute. So we'll have a look at that as well. But basically this big drop, boom, that one mistake is basically cost him because the rest of that, as I said before, is pretty consistent. And, and yeah, Lewis is taking turn 14 in second gear, whereas Max is running it in third. There's Max like quicker again on the way in. So it's interesting to see, isn't it? So each time the little, each time the chart goes up here, Lewis is gaining back a little bit on Max. So it looks like Lewis has got a lot of confidence on the brakes, more than Max amazingly but he's not been able to hang on to that advantage all the way through the corner so they're just approaching the corner in two different ways and i, I guess you put that down to style and maybe their cars so that's really interesting but i think maybe max could because he because max was running turn 10 in second gear oh, i wonder though it's it's, it's oh so when i say second it's um, probably third and third and fourth here it's, there's so many gears eight gears in there so just look at the speeds 
what we'll do is we'll go have a look at this turn eight and thanks to the formula one guys and their article they have zoomed in on that area and so we can see now exactly what goes on and so you can see so coming in this is coming in so turn nine and ten you can see so lewis has got that sharper line in so that means he's a little bit slower and it does start to from about this point here he's starting to lose some time so he's lost half a tenth by the time we get to the apex is that i don't know about ten about a tenth by the time we get to the apex and that's just on the way in and then he has his little wobble which you can see in the steering here yeah there's a little wobble yeah so max is trying to be a bit more enthusiastic and he's had to back out of it a little bit or whatever but if you look at lewis's it's just really progressive really lovely and so that sort of saved his bacon a bit really because he, he's been able to get back on the throttle really nicely interestingly max has a little moment there on his speed chase so you do wonder if there's a bump and that, that probably is actually a little little bump on that corner but here we go and these are all the little things so what we're doing now we're really into the fine details of what is going on with this with these two laps but what we want to do now is start to roll back and go okay well, it's all very well but what we're going to do about it so you can see yeah lewis has had this oversteer moment within the video we saw it on the major on the overview on the data and now we're seeing the zoomed in data we've said so that moment there is cost is cost him at least two tenths but there are other little things going on around the lap and there's opportunities for max as well so just again pull yourself back and and double cross now now double double cross double check what you've interpreted and you can double check it with a video and then if you had the driver there you can double check it with a driver now the interesting thing is i'm sure if you said to lewis yeah that oversteer moments cost you he'll probably go yeah no. so it's not news but that's what that's what cost but he, he lewis may not know how much it's cost him what data can help you do is, is help you to quantify some of the effects of mistakes and sometimes it's not as bad as you think and that can be really reassuring for a driver and you can say yeah yeah you did have that moment that big wobble but it didn't really cost you anything and for example you can like if you looked at turn five six and seven if you just looked at video comparing lewis and max max losing way more curb and you think oh maybe that's what i need to do and i think that's possibly it would benefit lewis but equally it's safer not to be on the curb and he hasn't he's lost a little bit of time maybe a tenth but when you're doing that risk reward ratio it's do i want to gain that tenth or do i want to make sure i do it every time so what the data has been able to do is help helping you quantify some of these decisions along the way let's put this together in a plan so max has some opportunities and lewis does even max even though max got the pole he's st he could still go quicker and this is one this is a really important thing that often gets confused it's like even the best drivers in the world could go quicker so Max's opportunities, in my opinion, are end of braking coming to turn four. Lewis took a tenth out of him into going in there. Yes, he kind of caught it back a little bit by the sort of entry to turn five, but not enough, I would say, such that if Lewis had then done the rest of the lap the same as Max, he would have lost some time. Certainly the end of braking for turn four is an opportunity. And then turn 14, I put second gear, a gear less than what he has, just to get a bit more drive out lewis was in a slightly lower gear now it obviously depends on the gear clusters and what ratios they've chosen but they did look fairly similar from a standing back point of view so it might be that there was some opportunity there given that max did drop down for turn 10 so there, there are his two opportunities possibly worth what like 10th uh, you've probably you've probably got another couple of tenths there overall for lewis turns five six seven i should say try taking a bit more curve on those the more of that max if you feel the car can do it it might be that the car it would be slower to do that because they are two different cars aren't they so it might be that lewis's car will feel slower to do that and then take a this the big one it really is turn 10 but it's not really about turn 10 it's about getting a better exit from turn eight which is one one of the tenths and then of, of the three and a bit and then the entry taking that wider entry through nine just to widen up turn 10 such that he wouldn't have so much lock on the steering which would then hopefully result in him not oversteering and we are talking about these kind of fine very precise refinements but 
that's at the level these guys are at. When we're talking about doing it at a clever amateur level, it's like the, the, the opportunities are much bigger. It's literally do this and you will be a second faster or you'll at least be half a second quicker through this corner. And that's the that's the revelationary bit. So we're using uh, these guys as an example, but really the opportunities are, are way, way bigger at clever and amateur level. So it's worth having a think about this. These subtle differences make a huge difference. And so you can think, okay, I don't want to, I, I've got to focus on my exit. Exit's the most important thing because that's what's cost Lewis. And the entry, yes, I, once I've got my exit sorted, then I can work on my entry. And I think this is something that Lewis could certainly do. And maybe drop, I put again, second gear, one gear less than whatever gear he was in through turn 10 because that seemed to work for Max as well. So that might just give him a little bit more bite. Now it might be that he, because he was catching the oversteer, he missed a gear change there. He might have intended to be in the lower gear. We, we don't know could, we, that's when the having the driver standing next to you <laughs> is uh, the real benefit because it's did you consciously not choose that gear or was it just there was too much going on you were just trying to control the car at that moment in time okay so that's where you've got to mix all of these all these bits of data so you've got the the log data the video and the driver feedback those three things together help come to form these plans so if this is something you uh, want to learn to do with your own data, then I have a complete beginner's guide to motorsport data analysis that really zeroes in on the, the club and amateur level. The racer using club and amateur level equipment and what you can get from it. And there's way more you can get in terms of the detail when you have a little bit more information, some of that acceleration data and some of the more of the lap time information. So you can start to build these plans out, but really this is the essence and this is what we're trying to do in terms of applying data it's not data for the sake of data it's 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 applying data so that when you go out on track or your driver goes out on track they are actually quicker or at least they know what they need to do to be quicker and they can be sure that if they did that they would be quicker i hope you found that interesting i think it's absolutely brilliant uh, what formula one have done to release this data with a cross point like that. i've never seen it before and i hope they do plenty more of it because it's really highlights the value of what you can get from data so Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for now and see you soon. Bye now.